If you narrowly escape death, how would you live the rest of your life? For one Kaohsiung local named Zhuang Jieren, the answer was to devote his time to saving trees. As a student, Zhuang suffered a 25,000 volt electric shock. Doctors gave him a 0% chance of survival, but he beat the odds and recovered. And then he committed himself to giving back to society. Now he is the head of the Forest City Association, which aims to protect all the trees in Kaohsiung from overpruning and deadly relocations. We catch up with him in our Sunday special report. It's mid-August, and a group of protesters has gathered outside Kaohsiung City Council to convene a press conference. Their leader is Zhuang Jieren, the founder of the Four City Association. They're protesting against the construction of high-rises in a green area near Kaohsiung's Lotus Pond, which they say would ruin the scenery. They're calling on the city government to scrap the plan. Dragon and Tiger Pagodas at the Lotus Pond are on the main page of our city's tourism department website. If you build these tall buildings behind them, that will have an impact on tourists' willingness to visit. The area would just get uglier and uglier. Zhuang cares about the skyline at the pond, but his top priority is the old trees in the area. Should the project for high-rises be approved, this green field would be covered in concrete. The 28 trees that have been here for decades would all be removed. Zhuang wants to protect the landscape, the green space and the trees. It's his way of repaying the heavens for giving him a second chance at life. Back in 2010, as a graduate student in architecture, Zhuang needed to prepare a proposal to preserve the old railways at a pier in the city. To complete his proposal, he climbed on top of a train to take photographs. While he was up there, he got electrocuted with a 25,000 volt shock. I had a breathing tube in my mouth, so I couldn't speak. Then I also had a urinary catheter coming out from my belly and a rectal catheter in my anus. I had electrocardiogram electrodes here and a venous catheter over here. I had third degree burns on 70% of my body and my lower body was paralyzed. The doctors told us they needed to amputate. I asked them, what are his chances of surviving after amputation? They said 2%. I asked, what about without the amputation? They said zero. Though his chances of surviving were close to none, Zhuang decided to keep his severely damaged legs, which were scorched black and festering. They took the skin from my scalp and transplanted it to my legs. The skin on the scalp can regenerate six times. So they cut my scalp skin off six times. The way they do it is they take the skin and spread it apart, like dry shredded squid, like a fishnet. Then they staple it down on the body. They secure it well so that the fishnet slowly heals. While I was on the hospital bed, my parents said, if you get through this, you should use the rest of your life to contribute to society. After being discharged from the hospital, Zhuang had to go through a painful rehabilitation. Gradually, he became able to bend his legs, and eventually, he was able to walk again. Having survived a fatal shock and even regained his mobility, Zhuang decided to join an association that advocated for planting more trees. At the beginning, he took a moderate approach to tree activism. Over there, I advocated for planting more trees and I promoted public awareness. I was the vice secretary general back then. I would tell people, no, I'm not from a tree hugging association. It's just that if you renovate this park, cutting down all these trees would be a real pity. Planting trees is really hard work. Back in the day, Gaosheng's trees were in a sorry state. It was not just a matter of tree pits overflowing with roots or unhealthy plant growth. 
there were two other major problems. One of them was the mass removal of trees during park renovations. The other was over pruning, which removes the tree's full canopy, leaving behind thick branchless trunks. Seeing it all happen over and over again riled up the beast in mild-mannered drum. I rode my scooter around Kaohsiung and found that they had lopped off the canopies of trees in 50 or 60 parks. They were all in parks and the trees weren't covering shop signs or anything. I was shocked. They'd ruined so many trees. It steered our association into becoming more and more like a tree protection association. His mild methods proved unable to change old ways. So Drong took action, blocking the city's pruning work and renovation projects. He insisted on speaking up for the city's dwindling population of trees. Holding press conferences and lobbying local councillors became part of his daily life. For every single tree, he goes to check whether it should be relocated. He spends so much time and energy on this, even though it's only tangentially related to his mission. We really thought it was extraordinary, so he has support from across party lines. Drung decided to become a professional in tree health. He studied to become a certified arborist. Then, in August of 2020, he took matters a step further and founded the Forest City Association. Drung was a force to be reckoned with, but there was only so much one man could do. Over the long term, Drung had to educate the public to rally more people to the cause of protecting the city's greenery. I look back and realize that education is extremely important. It's because you'll find that if you don't educate people to pay attention to their environment, they don't feel connected with this environment. They might be completely indifferent to all these issues. Education was integral to their cause. One fact they shared was this. Trees that are removed from construction sites are relocated to sites where they tend to die quickly. This is a tree bank, where trees come to rest after being uprooted from their original sites. But look up, and you'll find that all the royal palm trees here are dead. We saw data regarding the transplant of trees. In Taipei, the survival rate after 10 years is just 11%, and 30% die in the first two years. These tree banks are actually more like tree hospices. Drung knows three of the banyan trees in the bank. He had tried to rescue them from this fate. They were originally growing at a school that was renovating its running track. I know this one. I saw it in its original spot. I spoke with the school principal who told me the school had already secured a contractor. The principal was very courteous to me, so I didn't use any hardline methods. So it ended up like this. One of the trees has died, as the other two barely hang on. Drung is saddled with guilt over not changing their fate. road to saving trees, there are heartbreaking defeats, but also happy victories. For example, the tall trees in this lush boulevard were saved by none other than Zhuang. He has some difficulties moving around. He's very enthusiastic. He'd be here at 7 or 8 p.m. all by himself, asking people to sign the petition. We calculated that more than 700 trees were going to be removed. Seven years following his near-death experience, Zhang has been pushing for change. Since then, Kaohsiung has banned the excessive pruning of trees. 
These days, the city must hold three discussion sessions with local residents before park renovation projects can get the green light. On the surface, it looks like he's not making any riches. And that's true, but he's actually reaping quite a lot. Because he's not just helping people and trees, he's also helping ants and all the creatures that fly, swim, and crawl. For 11 years, Zhuang has not earned a single dollar from his activism. His association relies fully on donations. With determination and a passion for life, he's committed to ensuring that Kaohsiung stays green by speaking up for every single tree.